thing that we're going to talk about is lectins. Now, the plants have a defense system to protect it from bacteria, fungus, even wild, you know, small animals, insects come and kind of eat on this. And uh, what comes out is, is a kind of a biochemical that the plant releases and it's called a lectin. Now, you would have seen this uh, when people cut the edge of a cucumber and they roll the and they roll the peel on it. Okay, and they roll the peel on it. You get a kind of a white sticky fluid. That is the uh, lectin. And the only problem about lectins is they kill the good bacteria in your gut. Okay, it, it has a very adverse effect on your good bacteria. Because it kills everything that's out. Anything that looks like bacteria, the lectins is neutralized. So it's literally like a Vietnam War when it comes to uh, bacteria getting knocked off by these lectins. Now, a lot of these obviously are now found <clears throat> in the the vegetable in the seeds. The seeds are the ones that actually hold the storage of a lot of these lectins. And as soon as this invasion happens on the skin or the outer shell of that vegetable, it starts to release the lectin. So that's why it's advised, you know, eat raw cucumbers, raw tomatoes, a uh, lot of raw stuff, you know, oh, is not really good. Okay, maybe you can you can take the outburst of say lettuce. Oh, it's probably okay. It's fine uh, because they really don't have any seeds. Uh, they do have some kind of defense mechanism, but nevertheless, they don't really contain you know, lectins as such. So, never eat raw cucumbers. And if you do eat a raw cucumber, take the seeds out completely. Okay, and even raw tomatoes. I'd say there's once I think you remove all the seeds from a tomato, there's hardly tomato left. Okay. But you will find that when people are cutting salad, sometimes you'll see that they've removed the seeds completely. So if you really want to be on the safe side, you might as well want to, you know, cook the cucumber as well. Okay? Cooking with salt actually breaks down a lot of the lectins. Now, there are every kind of food, almost, almost every vegetarian food, which has something like seeds or is definitely going to have some lectin in it. So, even rice has a certain amount of lectin. Okay, a uh, lot, lot of grains have lectins in it. Uh, even chickpea, uh, red beans, black eyed peas, you know, all those legumes also have lectin in it. So you definitely have to cook them and you have to cook them with salt. But there's still going to be a certain amount of lectins left inside. Okay, but the nutritional value of these foods far outweighs that little bit of lectin that's going to get into the system. Okay? So, nevertheless, you can't avoid it completely. It's going to be there in some food or the other and nothing much you can do about it. So, you just have to make sure you have enough of prebiotic. Okay? Uh, fibrous food with soluble and insoluble fiber. Uh, and make sure that you have enough ammunition to keep your good uh, Good bacteria intact. So having a lot of fermented foods uh, like idlis and dosas which have been fermented are uh, very, very ex extremely good. Okay. So, so that's one thing you have to kind of keep as a regime. So it's a non-stop thing. If you could take lectins out completely, probably life would have been a different story. But unfortunately, we can't. Because it's going to be there in some food. The only way is to reduce the, the concentration of lectins that you have in your food either by avoiding them, certain things, or cooking them, okay? So even if you get, like, you know, you get gram, you get, uh, you know, the, the, the mong dal, uh, you know, they sprout, but then the mong dal is still left behind. So you may want to eat only the sprout, but don't eat that seed. Okay, so a lot of seeds also, some of them do have uh, lectins. So there's nothing you can, it's something you can't avoid is to keep replenishing your good bacteria constantly. But to keep doing it, but to give yourself a dose every day. The other way to also to get good bacteria is to go out and meet people. Okay? Even when you meet somebody, shake their hand, you're going to pick up their good bacteria. Okay? So, if you're a, if you're a world traveler and you ever want to go on a world tour, make sure you shake hands with all the races. Okay, because what will happen is you will get some fantastically new good bacteria and you know, totally foreign imported mall, as they say. 
So it'd be good for you too. Even having a pet at home, even pets also have a certain amount of good bacteria that they can be with you. So the worst thing that can possibly happen to anyone is being isolated for a prolonged amount of time. And we've seen that it has happened. <clears throat> there have been severe lockdowns in a lot of places. Uh, but people who stay locked down or inside the house for like three months, their entire genome of good bacteria is going to become smaller. They're going to have a lesser variety of it. And you're more, more or less living in a sterile environment. You've been washing your hands with all those, you know, all those liquids that you get outside malls and things like that. Um, and they came into the house too, because during COVID, everyone was probably taking bath with those things. So uh, that's also going to help. That's going to hurt your, your, your bacteria as well. So you're just living in a kind of a sterile environment is not going to help you at all. It's going to reduce your immunity. Okay, so going out, stepping out, even to walk, meeting people is a very good thing to do. Uh, you can see that. You know, so, sort of that problem has actually affected China a lot because they've been isolated for far too long. And uh, that has actually reduced their immunity to, to a bit. So that when they were exposed to a new strain and started to move out, it really hit them pretty badly because there was no inbuilt uh, you know, immunity system. And like like everyone is, going, is moving towards now is that the... Uh, Neutraceuticals, okay? This is actually a lot of uh, medicine. I wouldn't call it medicine, but a lot of this is what you get from fruits, vegetables, uh, marine life. These are all finding on themselves into, you know, things that you can take, uh, like a tablet or a syrup. And uh, there are very concentrated versions of what you might find in food. And I think slowly the world is going to start moving towards very alternate therapies uh, which will include a lot of things that are related to food, uh, <clears throat> a lot of things that are related to how you interact with the world. It's like, you know, you might want to have two, three different kinds of pets in the future. We don't know how that's going to go. But the symbiotic relationship that uh, seems to be because gaining a lot of speed now is beginning to make a lot more sense. Okay. And now the other thing that is also getting making a remarkable strides is <clears throat> um, sound, okay? Vibrational therapy, audio therapy is becoming extremely powerful these days because it's a non-invasive way of, of solving a lot of problems. Okay? And some things, you, there are some things that you cannot even reach with cell phone. There's something very deep rooted in the brain uh, is something you can't really touch except through maybe some gamma radiation or something. So, so sound therapy is also getting into it's, it's becoming more and more uh, scientific. I mean, we're making some discoveries there. And uh, hopefully that uh, when you combine all of these things, we typically will have a very non-invasive way of curing a lot of our problems that we have. And of course, preventing, which is more important than curing. So that prevention will start to bring itself, will start to get, you know, get up. So it's a, it's a quite an exciting future. And as you, as you start to go through a lot of the videos that are there, and you start to build your program for yourself, you'll start to get an appreciation for, for a lot of things in life, which we typically may not even know about, and some things we even take for granted. You know, maybe even a glass of water we take for granted, but, uh, you know, knowing uh, harmonics can even change the quality of what, what we, of the food we have. Um, so, so there was, I think, I probably think it was a Japanese scientist who actually took two glasses of water and one glass of water, he just cursed it and, and gave all cuss words and he was swearing and said bad things to it. And he froze that into ice cubes. And he took another glass of water and he started saying very pleasant things to it, very exciting, happy things, laughed at it. And, and he put that also into the freezer and he froze the cubes. The structure of the crystals was far different from the cursed water and the blessed water as well. The structure of the ice itself, and so so there, there are a lot of there's a lot of science that is going into that as to what are these frequencies that actually aid the human body, what are the ones the frequencies that actually disturb uh, a bacteria or a virus, 
I think for, for viral therapy, this is going to become something very profound because if we find that maybe three different frequencies fired at a particular uh, you know, part of the body where it's infected could actually rattle the virus so much that it just disintegrates. Okay? I mean, that's the, that's the theory that they have. And uh, whether they adapt or whatever. So, so I guess they're probably going to find out you know, how they're going to actually make you know, a frequency, sound frequency as actually a weapon to defend ourselves against viruses. So, so a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, it's still, it's still a, not an exacting science, but there are things like chicken pox, um, you know, the, the, the herpes zoster family, they all go and live in your spinal cord. And they're on the nerves. And you, can never, you can't touch them because nothing goes there. And they live with you forever. So they're just trying to find ways to actually find out how to knock that out. 